With me is Ivan Campbell from Campbell Aero Classics based in Lowburn, North Canterbury. And as mentioned earlier, we uh, were meant to talk about a, uh, a local flying ace uh, on our Anzac Day special program last year. We just didn't get time, so I'd like to uh, talk about Colin Gray with you, Ivan, a man that you have a huge admiration for, obviously. Yes, um, when I was building my Spitfire, I thought rather than just having a, a registration number or just being another material object, I'll try and put a, a bit of meaning to it. And uh, I wanted to attribute the aircraft to somebody and their colours and uh, their registration numbers of the aircraft, um, which uh, civil aviation obviously uh, allowed us to do. Um, I was looking for somebody that basically that was a New Zealander, of course, uh, so I wanted to have some representation there. Um, so I, I came across in my... Um, in my research, uh, Colin Gray, who was born in Papua Nui and in, in, in here in Christchurch, which was it couldn't be better, uh, and he went on to attend Christ College here at Christchurch and then applied a couple of times to join the RAF, but was actually turned down on medical grounds, so he uh, decided he'd go out and do a bit of mustering to get fit, so um, he was keen to get into the war, the Second World War at that stage. So uh, he, uh, his brother also applied and got accepted before him and went off to, uh, to England to join the RAF. So uh, Colin, uh, actually, he, he, he was accepted eventually, went through, um, turned out to be a very good uh, pilot and was um, quickly promoted through the ranks. And um, he, he did most of his flying weird before the war, do you know? Uh, I think he actually started during the war. He he wasn't he wanted to be a pilot. He wanted to go and do his bit, I guess. And uh, he he wasn't flying prior to that. So he he went and did his training in uh, in England with the RAF. That brings us to a very interesting point. So a lot of these young men, and and a lot of them were what nineteen when they signed up, Ivan. Correct. Yeah. Around nineteen, yeah, yeah. they uh, they had not a lot of flying experience. Some of them, and probably well, obviously no combat experience. Of course, yeah. A lot of them never had any any training. They just wanted to do their bit, I guess, and uh, they elected uh, one of the services and uh, I suppose the flying it was more attractive to them at the time. Yeah. So um, am I allowed to ask, I, I don't think you've mentioned it so far, uh, uh, in this politically correct world we live in, are we allowed to refer to uh, the planes that he shot down as kills? I think we are, aren't we? Well, I think that's recognised. It has been around for many years. Um, we don't like to think of, of, of a human thing, of the of the people that are killed and the pilots. A lot of them, of course, were saved. They bailed out and were saved. We talk about the killing of the aircraft, really, and, and to, to stop that aircraft being available to um, cause more harm on the, on your own, uh, your own side, basically. But yes, uh, Colin actually um, was the highest New, uh, New Zealand scoring ace in the Second World War with 27 and a half kills, as we call it, um, which he survived. He, he was shot down himself uh, and he crash-landed, but obviously survived that with without actually injury throughout the war. Uh, and he went on, he fought in the Battle of Britain, um, and uh, also in the um, uh, in the Mediterranean and in the invasion of Sicily and North Africa. And during that time, he rose through the ranks, uh, finished up as group captain, and he was actually uh, awarded the um, the DSO, the Service Order, Distinguished Service Order, and the Distinguished Flying um, Cross uh, with a couple of bars. So he was very well recognised as being a, a good leader and a very, very capable pilot. Uh, I think, like anything, it took its toll on him. Um, I have seen some photos uh, of him in, in these campaigns, and he looks pretty worn out at that stage. Uh, a very interesting thing about Colin, um, he, he did stay on and survived uh, the war, obviously, and stayed on through uh, the RAF and, and helped them with a lot of test flying with uh, meteor or jet fighters. Um, and then he uh, eventually returned back to New Zealand where he um, became the, the director of Unilever products here. Um, and uh, he, he remained in New Zealand until about 1995 where he, he, he passed away in the North Island. Um, during this time back in New Zealand, he wrote a very interesting book called Spitfire Patrol, which I'm lucky enough to have been able to hunt down a copy of it. Um, it's a very, um, uh, how can I say, a very um, uh, true account, a, a chronological true account of his actions and written very humbly by him. Uh, and it does make good reading. They are about, and um, I'm lucky enough to have a, a copy of of that and uh, through that I, I saw photographs of him and his aircraft and um, I actually copied the paint scheme that he had on his aircraft with his um, his private numbers being a, a group command a group ca captain he could um, he could actually have his, his initials uh, CG on it so I actually
actually uh, got permission to have CG. I also contacted the family and asked uh, for their permission if I could tribute my aircraft to, to him, and they approved of that. Well, what a great honour. It was, yes. Yeah. So uh, I would imagine, I don't want to romanticise this too much, but when you're up there flying, you must think about Colin sometimes, do you? Yes, uh, I, I do actually. I think about a lot of the pilots, and I've been very fortunate to take some um, ex Battle of Britain pilots flying in my Spitfire, uh, which is a two seater, of course, and dual control. So I've had some uh, amazing, uh, very, very humbling experiences taking some of these uh, men who flew over the over the channel in in those operations, and um, and believe it or not, they still know how to fly them. You know. <laughs> Are they dual controls? They are, yes, uh, yes. So they actually get to take the controls. They get to take the controls. I had uh, an Ambly man who was um, he, he was getting older, and uh, we decided to get him a fly in the back, and I flew down to Godley Heads and uh, around that area, come back, I said, would you like to have a fly of it? And he said, oh, yes. And I said, would you grab the control stick in the back? He said, I have been. <laughs> <laughs> so he yeah. took that stick, and I put my hands in the air, and he flew it all up round Ambly and back to my place in Lowburn. So a very, very um, humbling experience. I can imagine what a fantastic experience that must have been for mm. both you and him, Ivan. Mm. Ivan Campbell from Campbell Aero Classics with me in studio at Compass FM. This Sunday, of course, is Anzac Day. What you may not know about uh, Ivan is that he produces hard shell leather flying helmets here in Canterbury, in fact at Lowburn here in North Canterbury, and I'd like to ask him a bit about that uh, fairly shortly. Uh